Hello, hello to you, my fellow printed weebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, a country where punctuality is the state religion. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. We just added the K2 and the K2 Pro to the shop. These are Coriality's newest printers, similar to the K2 Plus, but different. We're testing out the K2 Pro right now, and we'll have a video in a couple of weeks with all of the details about how it is different from the K2 Plus. These are basically a light versions of the K2 Plus, and the K2 Plus had a lot of advanced features, such as a 350 degree hot end, and, and that's not really important for a lot of people, so this is, is welcoming uh, for those who are budget strapped and only really want to print standard filaments. Despite that, it, it is capable of printing higher temperature materials, so up to 300 degrees. So those of you who are printing ABS and nylon can use this printer very easily because it does have a 60 degree heated chamber. The printer also does have automatic pressure advance and flow rate calibration, making profile building a lot easier. K2, on the other hand, is the budget version of the Pro, which is honestly a pretty standard printer. It's good for beginners for sure, but definitely far less interesting than the Pro and the Plus versions. Next up is, uh, okay, so you you might have heard about Snapmaker launching the U1 on Kickstarter last week, and in only 24 hours, it, it gained uh, almost 8 million euro, which is more than the entire campaign of the X1 uh, when Bamboo launched that on Kickstarter, uh, which is nuts. There are a bunch of test videos on uh, YouTube with the prototype, and I've linked a few below. There's some really good ones. Check it out. But since then, Bamboo Lab have announced their H2S printer, which is similar to the H2D, but uh, much bigger and a uh, single nozzle, hence the S. Looks interesting, but we don't have detailed specs yet. Maybe they thought this was underwhelming because soon after they teased their uh, Vortec tool changer concept, which is uh, swapping the nozzles instead of the entire printhead. Uh, again, not much info is known about this, but it does look pretty interesting. And then around the same time, uh, Prusa decided to tease their tool changer concept uh, with just one sneaky little photo. Uh, this appears to be a Bontech index type device, so uh, looking forward to hearing more information about that. Let the arms race begin. More from Prusa, you may have read Joe Prusa's article uh, on open sourced hardware being dead. This is a response to Anycubic filing a patent on the open sourced MMU multiplexer that Prusa released nine years ago. This was initially a Chinese patent uh, used to claim patent in Germany and then in the US. Uh, unfortunately, he is uh, kind of right. Prior art doesn't seem to be effective uh, in stopping a patent application like this. And of course, that is not the only open source project that has been patented by unrelated parties in the future. Uh, if you're unaware, here is a list of some of those projects. Dark times indeed. I have linked a paper down below which details those particular projects. So it seems there is quite some risk in open sourcing a design due to this tactic. Why open source something if it's going to be patented and you could face potential IP infringement? It's ridiculous that this actually can happen. So what do you do? You, you patent your design. Well, considering these can cost thousands, tens of thousands of euro, this is pretty much not an option for almost every hobbyist. Companies could patent, Prusa could totally patent, but they could still honor sharing designs much like other companies do with open patent pledges. Tesla, Google, OpenAI, Amazon, Windows have all done this to varying degrees of freedom. And this was accelerated greatly in the medical sector during the pandemic, simply because it was necessary to develop a certain technology as quickly as possible for the benefit of everyone, I guess. Now, I don't believe the patents are intrinsically bad. Patents do foster competition and innovation so that other parties can develop other technologies to compete but open source is important because it focuses on one design that can be developed and completed by independent parties. That is its strength beyond, of course, consumer needs such as protection against obsolescence. The system, however, needs work and prior art should be something that can be used to protect your own design. But of course, patents and their costs are only applicable to companies with financial backing. So if you're a hobbyist in a cave with a bunch of scraps, well, you just got talent that can be usurped. Okay, next up is Bamboo's new Hueforge-like color painting tool. So if you're not familiar with Hueforge, uh, you should become familiar with Hueforge. It's essentially a program that is used to blend different colors together, layer after layer, to create a print that, while maybe only using four different spools, actually comes out like it's a hundred different colors. That's it, put simply. 
Qforge has been developed over the last couple of years by Steve Levadis. I had the pleasure to talk to him, like actually just over two years ago when Qforge was released. Uh, I've linked the video down below if you guys are interested. Uh, but now Bamboo are making their own version and it's, it's not ready yet, it's just a, an announcement, uh, but they're calling it the Chroma Canvas. Steve has said a lot about this on his X profile already. He had expected this kind of competition, but he hadn't patented Hueforge because he's uncomfortable with that. But we did ask him a few more questions uh, that were not really addressed, so here it is. First we asked, how did you greet the news about Chroma Canvas? I was kind of surprised. I really do think competition is a net positive to consumer, but I worry about how many dev resources a company like Bamboo Lab can bring to bear if they decide to. But I also realize it could expose more people to Hueforge in the long run. Next, would you have collaborated with them if they had asked? I'm always open to collaborations, but I must confess I'm also protective of my IP, so it would very likely have been difficult to feel comfortable turning over IP to a large company. For such a large industry player, I might have agreed to some kind of custom API for them, which would be a black box, but still let them use Hueforge as their backend. Would you consider collaboration with another group to increase visibility? As I said, I'm open to collaborations, but I would need a fairly concrete collaboration description to spend a lot of time on anything in particular, as time is my most limited resource. Would you consider repricing Hueforge if the Bamboo version comes out as free? I think my pricing is extremely fair and do not plan to revisit it at this time. In other news, the 3MF file format, SDL's cooler, more talented cousin, has officially earned ISO standard status. The STL is old. It was created in 1987 by 3D Systems and it's just geometry, geometry alone. But 3MF is basically a profile with all the settings that you need uh, in a very compressed geometry too. Having this as an ISO standard will provide greater streamlined use between different fields which may use 3D printing as this tech quickly expands into a multitude of industries. Lastly, and it's more Bamboo news, Bamboo Studio now has a physics-based thermal simulation and optimization software built into it. Now this is only applicable to Bamboo's newest printers and the X1, but I do hope something like this will be picked up and incorporated into newer printers and different slicers as they come out. It is useful because you can see where hotspots can be created in your model as it's printing due to the speed of the extrusion, the layer deposition, the heated bed and chamber temperatures too. So whether parts of your model are too hot or too cold, that might affect the stability and strength. I'm very much looking forward to seeing this rolled out for other printers in the future. Fingers crossed. All right, that about does it for this month. As always, links to all of the stories and products are down below in the description. Check them out. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you didn't know, we also have a Discord server where there is printer talk on a daily basis. We'll be back with another video next week. So until then, later. <laughs>